fortunate to have been there. Um, I, I will tell you that uh, I started uh, my career though as a high school teacher and basketball coach, and I was uh, I taught in psychology, sociology, world history, and theology, and then I became a professor at a small private college in the area of education. Did that for four years. So my background is as an educator, and I approach this mainly as an educator. I'm known primarily at the University of Phoenix and the Apollo Group as a business person and being able to drive business results, and I have I had some success at that, but I really approach it fundamentally as an educator. And um, so I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, at the Apollo Group around online education. But before I even do that, I want to say, because I want to miss this point, one of the things that I think is most misunderstood, because we it's such a hot topic and, and we've had success, others have had success in delivering education in an online format, but we talk about traditional education and we talk about non-traditional education. And I think what's happened now is we've come full circle and those things have been stood on its head. I think it, 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 there's been a complete 180 there. When, when people call and ask me, why has the University of Phoenix <coughs> been successful in delivering online education, it's surprising to them. Uh, but I think if most of us took out an eight and a half uh, by 11 sheet of paper, and I was to say to you, write out what you believe uh, defines best in your mind traditional education. You would write some things out, and then, if, and then if I said write what in your mind defines non-traditional education, you'd write some things out. And I think what we find is the way we deliver education online at the University of Phoenix is much more traditional than it is non-traditional. And those terms of today are very misunderstood. What it means for us today uh, to teach 160 or 170,000 students in an online environment is that it's instructor-led, it's small group, it's very interactive, it's very collaborative, it's very social, it's very warm, people get to know each other, it's heavy, heavily discussion-based, it's for, far more interactive than 95% of what goes on in a traditional brick-and-mortar classroom. And so think about it. What happens in traditional educational institutions, state institutions, for example, and I'm not trying to be critical, but the economics to make that work is if you've got a crowd of three and four and 500 people into a large lecture hall and you have somebody stand up in front of them, you have somebody deliver that content, and people take a, a midterm, they take a final, they may write one paper, and that's the class. You don't ever talk to your instructor, you don't ever get to know your instructor, you don't get a lot of personal attention, and the whole idea is that we can't support all of these freshmen and sophomore students in the majors at the university anyway, and it's the state universities that mainstream Americans have access to for the most part, and so we've got to weed them out. Economically, it's the only thing that we can make this work. So you take that and you compare it to what we do, and I think a lot of people would say, those are the roots, kind of, of, of education. That is an instructor, 14 or 15 students, really well thought out curriculum, a Socratic method in which there's content presented but there's lots of questioning. Students have to think. Students are involved in long-term discussions that go on for a week at a time. And they, they, they learn about the subject matter and they learn about themselves and about their fellow students and they learn about the world in that kind of environment. You can provide that online, which I think for a lot of people is very surprising. Um, what are we trying to do? There, there's three things that we believe uh, uh, are true for mainstream America. A lot of what we do is predicated on what we believe is happening in the economy. And that is that the middle class is getting squeezed, that the manufacturing jobs and the assembly jobs that really created the largest middle class in the world uh, are going offshore, and we all know that, um, and that there's going to be a need for higher education in this country like there's never been before. The current infrastructure is not going to work. The current infrastructure is not working. It's not designed to work for mainstream America. It's going to work for the top 10 or 15 percent of high school graduates who come from fairly uh, upper middle class or upper, uh, upper class homes. They're going to go away, and they're going to live on a college campus, and they're going to have four or five years of, of, of good study and great fun, and that's a great experience, but the reality is 85% or 90% of Americans can't afford to do that. And yet, they can't step into a job at General Motors like they used to and have lifetime employment with great benefits and all of that. They're going to have to go to college, but they can't go to college the way most of us went. It doesn't work. What do they want? They're going to define brands differently than many of us define brands. The number of tenured faculty, the number of volumes in a brick and mortar library, the line of Ivy on the wall, all of those things are going to be important to a 
small selection of people, but are going to be absolutely unimportant to the majority of Americans who have to go to college. They're going to be unimportant. It's not going to matter. The things that we believe that matter to them are, number one, they want a program that's specifically related to their career goals. They don't have as much time, and they've got to have something that is application-based in terms of where they want to work, where they want to have a career, where they're going to support their family and themselves. Very important. Very difficult to do without a really scalable online delivered education. Very difficult to do that. Secondly, it's got to be convenient and flexible because even students in high school today at public schools are having to work before they leave, in high, school, before they leave high school. Uh, most Americans are going to go to college. 85% of Americans in the future will go to college by working full time and going to college at the same time. The program has to be convenient. It has to be flexible. It has to work on their schedule. And thirdly, it's got to be affordable. And, and for us, that means it's got to fit inside Title IV funding limits. And if it doesn't, it's going to be very, very difficult for students to access it and complete it. Given those three things, and those three things all drive you towards the, the critical nature of doing more and more work in an online environment, we're trying to do the following. We're trying to create the largest platform for the delivery of meaningful, high quality educational services throughout the lifespan and across the globe. Um, and uh, that's a big task. We are started on it, but we think uh, maybe we're in the third or fourth inning as compared to what maybe where we'll eventually end up. I'd like to talk, 